You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Matt Bailey hosts a fantastic podcast called The Endless Coffee Cup. Matt, tell these fine folks what they'll get when they listen. At Endless Coffee Cup, we go beyond the headlines with a regular discussion of marketing news, media, and culture about our complex digital lifestyle. Of course, with my emphasis on education, I have great guests from all over the world that share their stories, giving listeners unique insights into their experiences and expertise. Sounds super useful. Where can people subscribe? They can go to my website at sitelogic.com or find the show at marketingpodcast.net or hey, we're everywhere, wherever you get your podcasts. You heard him. Go subscribe. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I'm Seth. Today, I am here with the OG of digital marketing. I mean, he was back in digital marketing, I think, when I was I was in diapers, but I was, I was in high school. <laughs> Not to make you feel really old. I mean, yeah, I have more gray hair than he does, so go figure. <laughs> but um, I'm here with Matt Bailey of Sight Logic, an endless coffee cup podcast. I think you have a tagline now for that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. It is digital marketing caffeinated. Oh, it's definitely caffeinated. Yeah, Get definitely Matt, caffeinated. Matt going with a um, guest on his show. It's like an hour and a half podcast. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get you going. It just goes and goes and goes. You, you can't yeah. stop listening, though, oh, which is a well, thing. thank you. Thank you. So yeah, I alluded I to the it. fact that Matt is an OG of digital marketing. You started SiteLogic or some version of SiteLogic back in the 90s, didn't you? Well, that was my first, I would say, professional foray into mm-hmm. website development, which led into search engine optimization, yeah. which led into analytics, which led into paid search. You know, you just, you, you it, hit it those dominoes, you, yeah. right? You know, and you, well, I got to learn that, and, you know, and you mm-hmm. just keep building on that. Uh, but yeah, I was building websites uh, for uh, a commercial real estate firm. And oh, wow. That's it was just... Edge. And then I, I started my own because I was selling properties as well. And it was just an incredible learning experience. And even to this day, I learned lessons back then about analytics, about mm-hmm. you know, asking the right questions about what am I tracking and mm-hmm. is it the right thing to track? And that just set the stage for everything I've done since. So you are actually a veteran. Actually, I said actually a veteran. That's not exactly nice, but you are a veteran. <laughs> yes. So thank you yes. for your service. Thank you. And it, so you you did that back in the '90s, right? Before you got into the web, or is it after the web? I st- so I started that in the late '80s. So yeah, oh, so you, I, you yes. jumped out, went did that, then you got all technical, technologically geeky in the '90s. I mean, you didn't really. I mean, you guess you could get geeky in the '80s, but it's more BBSs. Well, that's my my claim to fame is the way I learned about all this stuff is my dad went out on his own back in the mid eighties, came home with a Commodore 64 so that he could do mail merge. And he was doing mailings and all kinds of stuff. And so I started clowning around with the 64. Mm. Uh, Next thing you know, we, we, I, you know, a friend of mine, we went over to radio shack and we got a a modem and the phone cradle Mm. and just started playing around, learning about BBSs and uh, the Usenet, just amazing things. And so that's what triggered just, you know, I love this world. It is so it's much wild. fun. It's the first metaverse, really. It really is right. metaverse 1.0. Yeah. Like, like Mark Zuckerberg thinks like, oh, I'm creating the metaverse. No, it was there already. It wasn't immersive as, as you know, it was on the screen and it was right. text-based for a lot of it. But that was the first like alternate universe that we kind of tapped into. Well, it was the interactions, I think, were so much more genuine than what we have today. Oh, that's so um, now. Yeah. You, you know, and, and being on, especially in the search engine industry around the early 2000s, most of the information was transferred on forums. Yeah. And you'd have forums. debates, you'd have arguments. But the thing you had was, to read. you'd have to right, read. You would read, someone would create a 10 paragraph. Oh 
you know, here's what I think Google's doing and just go down. And then you would read through it and you would copy it and you would just go through like line by line. And then you, you would add more line, paragraphs exactly, yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, it was a very reasoned, very methodological yeah, Sometimes reasoned, approach. sometimes it was yeah, a little yeah, I will say there were the flame wars, yeah, that, that erupted. Yeah. But, uh, but it was not good for us with ADHD because you look at that and you're like, that guy wrote a book. And I'm like, I right. can't read that thing. So I, right, I literally right. print, I went back in like the late 90s, early 2000s. I would print out the what the person read and use a highlighter to read the points of one because like, I, I couldn't read it on the screen oh, i've yeah. gotten better with it because you've had to but like man some of these some of these tomes that these guys would write these people would write you can say guys but you know these people would, would write and oh my god right yeah and now it's all on twitter now it's like now it's like yep. threads <clears throat> well and, it, and it's kind of one or two lines um and it's people reacting Yes. And now I'll say it, it, the early forums weren't without their people mm -hmm. just reacting, but it was for the most part, it was people reacting with a counterpoint. Yes. With additional thought, with just as a research. It's getting answer. there with Twitter. It's getting now with the, now with the threads. Yeah. People are expounding a little bit more on their thought process, yeah. but it's still a tweet. It's yeah, still exactly. not as cool. And it's, cool. it's so out of, you know, I want to, if I'm going to read a, a long diatribe, I'm going to read it in a, you know, a specific format. Exactly. We're old dogs, new, you can't teach old That's dogs right. new tricks, right? Exactly. <laughs> so Matt, so you started Site Logic. Yes. Now, was, just, was it just you at first? I mean, I know you grew it into an agency. Right. Yeah. So I had been uh, in the brand side after I was in the real estate business. I was like, I love this internet thing more than I love real estate. Yeah. So I went to I, I went to work for a couple of brands. Then I went to the agency side because I felt like, you know, I really want to spread out. I want to, yeah. you know, a lot more brands were interesting. I, you know, I yeah. won't trade that experience because it gives me a good background as to the p politics that go on. Oh my God, those uh, politics, yeah. Yeah, but the agency side was just dynamic. It was fast and it was, you know, working with a lot of people. So I was at a traditional agency. Then I was at a wow. web development agency. And one of the things that happened was WordPress came out. Yeah. And I, right away, I'm going to the management of this company saying, you need to, you know, the days of a $70,000, $100,000 website are done. Oh my because God. Because this is going to change much everything. Yeah. And yeah, and, and there was kind of a reaction to it, not a whole lot. Uh, but at that time, I knew I started Site Logic. I was, I, I wanted nothing to do with development. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I because the development companies they would finish a website and they wipe their hands clean and we're done. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. And they're yeah I'm a on the better marketing at that now. Right, and and you know we're on the marketing side. That's yeah. where stuff begins is yeah, when it's fun, done. Yeah. And then I can't lose that support. I need programming support. I need graphics support. I I need all this because we're learning what wasn't mm. created right the first time. <laughs> and through yeah. testing and, and and so i felt it was a very arrogant way of doing web design that well we're done uh yeah. it's never done we just need to keep going keep testing keep developing so that's, I started site we'll logic. Media. that's what we do we do the website right. and we keep going we just keep yeah going. so i started site logic just purely as marketing i oh, developed wow. relationships with development companies yeah. and we would partner together on these things and, and yeah it was me in my basement for uh, probably about six months uh, and then I started bringing along people and they were just absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, I look back and, and one of them now is VP, uh, at, at a, at a brand. Another one is, uh, I, I think she's moving up to a VP position. Wow. So you can uh, say I so, knew them when, and then you got right, to get yeah. their start, which is kind of neat. Yeah. Makes you feel old, doesn't it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Especially, you know, they, they've grown up and had a family and it, yeah, it, it, it was just, yeah, it's it's great to look back and just just think about the the people that have come through our lives. It's it's absolutely amazing. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Carrie Barrett hosts a great podcast called The VIQ Project. Carrie, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. Okay, you know how you go to shoot a two-minute video, except it takes two hours, you hate yourself on camera, you don't know what to do with it, and so it doesn't perform? You'll get all the tips and tricks you need to fix all of that on this podcast. Wow, we're going to be lining up for this. Where can people subscribe? You can find it on my website, which is 
CarrieBerry.com. You can also find it if you search the VIQ Project Podcast on YouTube. Of course, you can find the show at marketingpodcasts.net or you can subscribe and search for the VIQ Project Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You heard her. Go subscribe. You yeah, so now site logic has now pivoted. And then whenever yes. I say the word pivot, I think of Ross and whoever else was in <laughs> friends with the couch going up the stairs. That really dates me here. But pivot. But you but, <laughs> but you pivoted more to training and teaching. Which yes. you know, you're a really good teacher. I mean, like you you explain things well, which is good. Thank you. Yeah, that's I from the feedback that I get from people, that is, I would say, probably the foundation of what makes me successful as a trainer or teacher is taking these, I mean, you know how complicated this whole thing can get. And yes. even if you go down a specialty like SEO, it can get, you're in the weeds really fast. So how do you explain it within a minute or less to a yeah. business owner in, in a way that not only they comprehend, but that they can say, oh yeah, I can do that. <laughs> that's yeah. that's really where we're we're shooting for and and yeah I had been doing training even when I had the agency and it got to the point where I needed to make a decision one way or the other which or you were too busy yeah yeah and I love the training aspect I you know I had a blast training the people that were working for me yeah uh, that was part of the fun uh, but then uh, leaving going back on my own back in the basement uh, yeah. and starting over it it was a very interesting time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had to, my wife and I had to learn how to work together at home. Uh, uh that was, <laughs> that was tough. part of the fun. Yeah. Fun. You say fun. <laughs> you're being nice. You're being very diplomatic here. I'm sure there's ups and downs and honey, you're talking too loud. I'm on the phone. Yeah. yeah. Turn off the dryer. I got a call. <laughs> oh, exactly. Or like, can you switch to laundry? Yes. My wife and I work in the same house together and I'm in the basement next to the dryer. That's yep, a good yep. microphone. And I'll hear a beep, 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 and I'm like, <laughs> she's not gonna hear it upstairs. All right, I'll get that after. I'll get that after I'm done my call. Like, right? <laughs> my mental yes. note: laundry after call. I'm like, <laughs> that's entrepreneurship right there. Do the laundry while you're absolutely. working. Absolutely, absolutely. Here's a, a question for you. In front of your screen, whatever. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that that's the best. So yeah. here's a question for you: What's the best thing about being an entrepreneur versus being in house? I have better job security. Really? That's my response. I have better I'll job sell. security as an entrepreneur. Um, here's a great example. I'm going for a loan for a house, okay? okay? Well, people that worked for me, they were buying houses, and all they needed to show was their uh, W-2, Yeah. and I've got a regular job, and they got they got approved easy, like within, within a week or something. Yeah. I go as the owner of the company, and I've got to start producing amazing amounts of like paperwork PLs, and documentation yeah. and all that to show that I'm not going to go out of business. <laughs> and I felt like saying, you know, you just gave loans to three people that if things go bad, I still get a check. <laughs> they yeah. It won't, you, you know, it, it just, and, and having gone through two economic downturns where I lost yeah. my job um, yeah. because of the cutbacks, yeah. it was, it, it's one of those things where I feel safer, more secure, I am in more control of my own destiny than if I were working for another company. And that's what wow. I absolutely love about being an entrepreneur. I love it. So what's the scares? What keeps you up at night? <laughs> keeps me up at night. Well, being an entrepreneur, so you know that. Exactly. Uh, I love how you, the you know, best thing and the worst thing are usually the same exact things. Yeah, there's there are times where you're kind of wondering, well, where's the next, you know, where's the next client coming from? Where's the next oh, check God, coming yeah. from? Um, and, and that's the that's the big question. Uh, and, and, and that's the thing. If, if you're all alone, you got to yeah. do all this work on yourself. And, and then when do you start farming it out? How much do you do? Uh, you, you know, finding, I will say that that elusive balance oh, is God, probably yeah. the hardest thing to find. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, when you do it's Nirvana, it, it's, it's yeah. incredible. <laughs> when, when you want rock and roll on. So what's the most important thing to carry with you all the time? Uh, you mean physically or it can be like in my brain? <laughs> it can be, you can go really deep, you can go really surfacy, whatever you want to do. Wow, wow. Most important thing to carry with me. I mean, it's my phone. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'll say, <laughs> I'll say that is, is the first answer. Uh, it, it, I would say the first, what I would attribute, you know, going back 30 years, mm -hmm. what I would attribute a lot of my success too is networking 
okay. and getting to know people. Um, there are a lot of opportunities I received because I took the time to get to know people, to network with them, to, mm-hmm. to really, you know, how can I help you in yeah. building a relationship? And those relationships, I'm not building them because they might pay off. The yeah. payoff is, is, is that's icing. Yeah. Um, and, and, but I look back and it's so many opportunities were because I knew people and, you know, when I started site logic, it was one of those things where, you know, I had left another company and I still had no idea what I was going to do. I didn't know, I, you know, am I going to go work for someone? Am I going to start up? Um, as soon as I, as soon as I realized, okay, I'm going to start my own thing, yeah. send an email out to all my friends in the industry. And two of them got back that day and said, I've got a little too much going on right now. How about you take this? I mean, that, that right there, it it all comes down to your attitude. It all comes down to how you treat Mm -hmm. people. It all comes down to the value you put into the relationships you have. I would have never been able to start like that if it weren't for, uh, you know, the trust and the relationships Mm -hmm. that I had with others in the industry. It's so important, and people don't realize that networking is, its oh. you know, as much as it's an extroverted kind of activity, it's worth its weight in gold. Absolutely. I'm trying to teach my wife how to network now because she's on her own, and I'm like, all right, you got you to gotta not be as much of an introvert. And she's like, well, that's your job. And I'm like, <laughs> hon, you got to, you got to, you just got to go out and, and, like, connect and meet people. And she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I've got a daughter. She's, she's starting her business she's an entrepreneur she's an Ooh. artist though yeah. uh and, and and you know it, when with a dad as a marketer and she's an artist and i'm like you know i'm looking at some of the stuff she's making i'm like okay you need to make a hundred of these and all of a sudden i've turned her into a machine and she's looking at me like dad just back off you know i make it because i like it i'm not going to turn around and make thousands she's of these. a z though that's what it is <laughs> i mean that's the total but as much as i don't like generational think of being a millennial and having people been bash the millennials. I mean, even you're an, you're an Xer, right? Yeah. yeah Xers the... got a bad rap from the boomers. You guys give us a bad rap. And then the Zs, oh, God, the Zs. Us Xers, we're in the corner watching everything go down. You know, no one talks <laughs> about the laughing. Xers. You're like, ha, ha, I know, ha. yeah. We're just sitting back laughing, going, you know, you guys go at it. We'll, we'll sit here and just, just yeah, watch the it millennials all burn are dealing down. with their offspring that are now Zs. Yeah, right, and, right. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, and they're brilliant. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but there's a. It's really funny how every like segment of generations, it, there's a whole different mentality shift. Like I thought, I thought we were out of left left field when we were millennials. I was, cause I mean, being a marketer, I was studying my own generation, and I'm and I'm I'm an elder millennial. I'm a geriatric millennial. I'm just I'm one year into millennial. <laughs> otherwise, I'm otherwise I'm a baby Xer, and so I'm looking at the younger millennials. I'm like, because you look at the top of the millennials and the bottom of the millennials completely different oh my god my designer is a baby yeah. millennial and her whole mindset's completely different from mine i'm borderline yeah. x mentality i think a lot of it has to do with you know in and i call it the, the great experiment of 2012 that's yeah. where the confluence of you know our our, our mobile our yeah. phone internet and social media are all on one device yeah. and nobody I, got so, I, I fought that I used to yeah. have my Palm Pilot <clears throat> and my phone. And I, I had the BlackBerry. swore I was never yeah. gonna have not one device. I was like, I don't, yeah. I can't trust it. I can't trust it. Yeah. No, I have one phone. So I have a tablet, but that's, that's yeah. the point. We give everyone this technology and no instruction book, <laughs> and yeah. and and we're seeing the results of this. Everyone's yeah. kind of had to figure it out for themselves. Some went all in. Some don't trust it. You, you know, and and we've got all these things. So I think that the generational differences have been magnified by yeah. the technology, but I also think that the generational differences are largely stage of life. Yeah. Um, I'll never forget, there was a Super Bowl commercial years ago, and it's a guy out with his friends. He's like, I don't need anybody. Next scene, he's with the girl. Uh, and he's like, oh, you know, we're just friends. We're not, you know, there's nothing serious. Next thing, he's at the altar. Um, uh, and, and then another, the next scene, they're at a table and they see another family with crying kids and they're like, we're never having kids. Next, next scene, they're at the hospital, you know, and, and, it, and it moves on and like, I'm yeah. never going to have a minivan. 
I'm never gonna, you know. And oh, finally, I avoided that though. Thankful. Oh, and I then only, the I end, only have one. You have four kids, so it's different. I have four right? you daughters, have, Seth. Four daughters. daughters. Yeah, but, you, but, you, but you have activities and stuff like that. Yeah. And like, so you need the minivan. I have one kid and a dog, so we could <laughs> we could get away with a small SUV. Oh Thank man, you. that's good for you. Good for you. We yeah, avoid I, the I, minivan. I, I'm trying to tell cool. my wife it's they time to give up the minivan. But the minivans are actually pretty cool now. I mean, they're very high tech. Handy. It yeah. comes in so handy. Yeah. These are the su- kind of suck up your pride. That's what, that's when like, the suburban, suburban attack vehicles came into play. You, uh, you want the minivan without the, without the minivan, without the van part. Right, right. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I've got my car, and that becomes the, you know, when it's just the, a couple of us, we'll take my car. You know, yeah, you don't need, you know, easier parallel park. <laughs> yes. The things are big. So, anyhow. <laughs> so, Matt, where can people find you online? What's your main watering hole? All right. The primary place is sitelogic.com. That is S-I-T-E, as in website. So sitelogic.com. From there, uh, you can find the podcasts. Uh, they're listed yeah, there. Good. Obviously, Endless Coffee Cup is on just about every podcast platform that's out there. Yeah. Uh, and then also, I have a training and education site. Uh, the classes are listed on SiteLogic, but if you want to look at that, it is learn.sitelogic.com. Uh, and so, yeah, the, the website's kind of the central area to find everything. And then, I mean, with social media wise, are you mostly on LinkedIn, Twitter, LinkedIn. Yeah. LinkedIn, LinkedIn baby. baby. Yeah, that is <laughs> LinkedIn's so, so, so good for business. I love it. So, yep. Yep. Yeah. So on LinkedIn, it's Matt Bailey site logic. Oh, there you go. Mine, I, I, and mine is Goldstein media and I, I'm terrified to change it because everything everywhere it's Goldstein media, but that's my personal page. And I'm like, right. Aah. I know. I well, and mine is is so I'm connected to my my brand. I can't yeah. change it at all. I am and, my brand. And, yeah, and and the person who has Matt Bailey like hasn't updated it since 2013 or something. <laughs> so, <That's bad>. ah. <laughs> yeah, I have that problem. I, I have a much more famous Seth Goldstein out in Silicon Valley, and we fight over our usernames constantly. So I'm that's like, great. It, it's hilarious. So. <laughs> Matt, this has been so much fun. Thank you for being on. Oh, thank you, Seth. I appreciate the invitation. Great conversation. Yeah, anytime. And go drink your coffee. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast directory of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Christopher Hines hosts a great podcast called Pod Central. Chris, tell us what these fine folks will get when they listen. We help you launch, grow, or monetize your podcast. We even help those podcast business owners out there grow their agencies and get more clients. This is a place where you come to learn everything podcasting. Wow. Where can people subscribe? Search for the podcast wherever you listen to your shows or find me on Twitter at Chris Podcasting. And I I can send it to you directly or go to marketingpodcasts.net. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.